Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, I certainly am. Uh, please let us know, everybody, if everything looks and sounds okay. Uh, can you say a few words, Mr. Perfect Dawa? Yes. <clears throat> I don't know if you hear me yet. Yeah, I, I should be fine. Let, let me let me know if there's any discrepancy between the uh, sounds, between between the voices and all that. I'm here today with uh, the perfect Dawa, or also known as uh, your name is Muji, Muji or something like that? Muji. Muji. Okay, yeah, is, that, is that short for Muji? Muji yes, Muji Dawa. Short. Oh, right. Okay, okay, okay. I see. So, uh, how are you doing? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. And how about you? I'm good. Good. Thank you so okay. much. Yeah. Thank you for uh, this opportunity. I would love to yes, talk about my why I converted to Islam. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. You, you converted to Islam? Yes. You... I was. I'm a former apostate. Somebody asked me, "What does that, that mean?" I am born to a Muslim family, and at the age of 25, I started to think that uh, if God exists or doesn't exist. After a few days, I decided. Ah, God doesn't exist because I was looking for the evidences, yeah, but mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't find it. And I have to say that uh, it was because um, I didn't have much knowledge and um, experiences. Later in life, I got better knowledge and experiences, and I was traveling in different countries. So I started to realize that uh, I was wrong, okay, about certain mm -hmm. things. So, um, and I didn't uh, convert to Islam overnight it took me time slowly slowly i was questioning why, why why is this in islam why is that you know different things and then slowly slowly i started to believe that okay this is uh, the answer so that's why mm -hmm. i decided that yes I'm so, 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 so to clarify this uh you were muslim in the past uh th okay. then you yeah, let me tell you this. I don't believe in that. No, but, I, be, be, because I, when you say convert, people think yes, like you, you had yes. nothing to do with it and then you converted to it. That's why. No, yes, that's why. I, I say that uh, I believe that uh, you cannot be born to a way of life, okay? You cannot be born to a, a political party like, uh, you know, this is wrong, actually, when they say that you are born to this religion and you have to accept it. Otherwise, you know, you are apostate. So th that's my belief, okay? <clears throat> so mm -hmm. I believe that, I just was born to a Muslim family. I knew Islam, but not much. So, and then I decided 25, and no, uh, God doesn't exist. <clears throat> so I don't consider me as a Muslim in the past, okay? I consider me as uh, just was born to, uh, uh, to a Muslim family, okay? okay. But uh, later when I found out, you know, the truth for me, then I decided, yeah, this is uh, the final message of God, and I converted to Islam. Yes. That's. Um, uh, how about your background? When you were, um, you don't say that you were a Muslim, but when you were in, uh, yes, in, that in, in Islam, uh, what, uh, which, which understanding of Islam was was that? Or nothing what? special. I just had heard that. Okay, God. Uh, but is, is your is your family uh, was your family like Sunni Muslim or? Uh, my, my my mother and father, yes, they were uh, Shia Muslim, yeah. Okay. But I didn't convert to any certain sect. I, I disagree with both of them and accept, you know, those, uh, uh, you know, uh, teachings that match with Quran. <clears throat> I reject mm -hmm. something in uh, Shiism, something in uh, Sunnism. So I converted to Islam and, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I believe that... Uh, for example, Shia Muslim, they kind of worship these uh, imams, you know, their shrines, okay. and that's unacceptable for me. Um, but there are things that <clears throat> in Sunnism also I reject, yes. So so you don't consider yourself a Sunni Muslim nor a Shia Muslim? A Shia Muslim. You, you told me you are a, uh, a progressive Muslim. Yes. Uh, as for your beliefs, you simply identify as a Muslim, as far as I understand, without yes. putting yourself into any specific corner of Islam. But you also want to uh, publicly um, identify that you are progressive in your views and beliefs. Yes. How did how did that happen? I mean, when you when we look at the the worlds of Muslims and Islam, for 
ever for a very long time. When we look into the world today, we see that uh, Muslims are mostly Sunni Muslims. Um, yeah. There are some Shia Muslims, and then there are very few people like in the in the fringe corners of the Muslim world that identify with different things. How did you decide that you should become a non-aligned Muslim instead? <clears throat> uh for example, um, I don't, you know, believe that we have to cross our arms when we are praying. Okay, <clears throat> these things that I decide myself that okay, uh, I do not accept this one. For example, because it's not mentioned in Quran and so on. <clears throat> so uh, let me explain for you why I became a Muslim first. Okay, mm -hmm. instead of saying <clears throat> that uh, about different sects. So I would like to say that um, I have learned that God has created the planet Earth, the sun, the moon, and all creature on this planet <clears throat> for a reason. He created us as animals, like other animals. Uh, okay, yes. Um, I, I wait for you because uh, I usually would like to... I'm still, I'm still listening. Yes. I just oh, to grab. Yes. yes. So he created us uh, like other animals on this planet and i believe mm -hmm. that the animal is not a form is a way of life the uh, most important part of that way of life is selfishness that i'm i i do everything for myself i'm ready to kill millions of people for myself i want to become richer richer so i don't care about others that's the, the animal uh, way of life and i don't believe that um, uh, human is a uh, form either is also a way of life. It's 180 degree opposite to, to that animal uh, behavior and way of life is maximum sacrifice. So God created us like animals, but he gave us this ab ability to understand so that he communicate to us and he changed this selfish, uh, you know, devil that is ready to kill millions of people for his own interest change this uh, you know uh, animal to something that is not in his nature which is humanity okay so that this uh, uh, you know this creature can sacrifice himself for his beliefs and you know and for his own kind <clears throat> and we are living uh, but uh, and a god uh, punish those who uh, you know live like animals and die like animals by hell, fire. If you live like animals and die like animals, you will be punished. If you live like human being and die like human being, you will be rewarded. But God knows that uh, we are living in a jungle with the jungle uh, rules, that the strongest one get the most, the weakest one get the least, and uh, has to you know, get little or nothing and has to die. So he knows that in this jungle, okay, we, <clears throat> Those who are strong, they want to become richer and richer. They do all bad deeds to become richer and richer. <clears throat> and those who are weak, they also have to do all bad deeds like selling drugs, prostitution, all these things to survive. So God wants us to leave from this um, animal, this jungle, this uh, animal world, this jungle, to live in a human world where we don't need to do bad deeds. No bad deeds happens. That's why Islam is the final message of God, <clears throat> and Islam is the message that is going to guide us to that world, okay? And that Mecca, that you say why it, it is not in uh, Christianity and Judaism, is because that Mecca is, uh, the last message uh, was kept for the last messenger uh, of God. And uh, in Mecca, the message is uh, there, that we, when we go once a lifetime, we have to go there, and we dress uh, equal, uh, those dress of Ahram, we call it, yeah, uh, two uh, pieces of material, uh, cotton material, and there, nobody is rich, nobody is poor, everybody uh, is equal. So we say to God, I accept it, and then we reject the opposite of that equality, which is this jungle and the jungle rules, okay? Which 1% of the total capital of the planet is belong, sorry, 50% of the total capital of planet belong to 1% of the world population, which is $110 trillion. And hundreds of millions of people live uh, on $1 or $2 a day, 
Okay. Th these are very interesting things that I heard before when I was into uh, into socialism uh, yeah. and, and socialist uh, philosophy, which I very much distance myself from uh, nowadays. But I, I don't understand. Um, I, I have I have a lot of questions. I want to jump in somewhere. Yes, very good. Uh, you, you have um, you say that we are like other animals and we go after our animal instincts but god corrected us and uh, wants us to follow a corrected message but if we simply stick to being like uh, the animals and we will go to a bad place i guess how did you come to that conclusion what yeah. do you base that on and what does that have to do with islam okay uh, <clears throat> you i mean this is a fact you know that this uh, that we are uh, animals we are like all other animals the only thing different is that we are capable of understanding that what is right what is wrong so god god gave us this uh, you know cape. he's not going to punish monkeys for example because they don't understand and he's not going to punish even us if we don't understand okay i i believe in that that he if you don't understand something is wrong and we do it he understand that uh, okay this person didn't understand it and he says that that i will forgive you if uh, you did something uh, without knowledge okay so what, what about non-muslims what about those who don't follow islam all right uh, that one uh, is uh, uh, what is it i believe that uh, as long as you live like a human being and die like a human being okay it doesn't matter in the islam i have learned it doesn't matter what you believe in it matter what you do okay there are lots of verses that say enter to my paradise for what you used to do okay so if you are isis if you are uh, you know taliban and you are oppressing people uh, you are killing people it doesn't matter that you say that i believe in allah or and so on it matter what you do like even uh, those uh, hypocrites around prophet muhammad which is called munafiq yeah allah cur cursed them for what they do not for what they said okay because they were saying we believe but in reality, they were not believing and they were doing, you know, bad deeds. So it is not about what you say, it's about what you do. All right? Yes. Okay, the thing is, um, your judgment of morality of what people are supposed to do and what they do is very arbitrary and it's very, it's very subjective. You are making these, these judgments about how people should be acting. Uh, others will make uh, certain judgments that will be completely in contradiction with how you view morality and how you view the expectations that uh, this supposed God is... Um, has over you know from from humanity the people who go out and fight uh islamic uh you know who become terrorists and who okay. become uh theorists of uh islamic revivalism and jihad justify it to themselves just as well and they don't go out believing that they are doing something bad and something rebellious which that they are not which they are not supposed to do no the people i mean uh, if, if you read their own uh interpretations and understandings i'm not talking about the average jihadi the average jihadi is just as ignorant as the average uh muslim i'm talking about the the the, the scholarly the learned ones who spread the the message and who inform the masses about their message they have uh, obviously the understanding that um what they are doing in terms of spreading you know terrorism and fear and uh, subjugating the enemies of islam and this and that is not evil it is actually good but and that those who label this stuff as evil are simply following their uh their their lustful human desires while they are obeying allah and uh, exercising the commands and the morality which allah you know gave to them so according to them that is the right understanding according to them that is what Allah expects from them, not what you do. By their understanding, you would be just following your uh, desires and okay. uh, leading yes. people astray. Yes, but the thing is that first of all, I whatever I say is fact. Okay. For example, when I ask them what are those dress of uh, you know ahram in Mecca dress, they they cannot answer you. They they say we don't know. Okay. So uh, and then um, the reality. I explained for you that 1% of the world uh, population, they uh, uh, own $110 trillion and they don't stop there. They want to become richer and richer. So they create all problems uh, in the world. They uh, produce weapons, they sell weapons, uh, everybody kill each other. They sell drugs, they sell uh, you know cigarettes, which kill 5, millions, uh, 5 million people every year. All these bad deeds is because of this uh, you know system that allows that 1% uh, 
okay, that 1% become richer and richer by selling weapons, by selling drugs, by human trafficking, only human trafficking is $100 billion industry every year. And then uh, it gives the opportunity to these uh, scholars as well to become richer by lying to people like I am Iranian, okay? If you, anyone, if you can Google right now in front of you, the history of Islamic terrorism, you cannot find a single terrorist attack by Muslims before 1979, when the Ayatollah Khomeini took the power in Iran. No, just, go, I have Googled it, I couldn't find it. When he took the power in Iran by the help of USA and UK, because they were afraid of Iranian revolution, okay, because they were afraid that the leftists take the power and they go towards Soviet Union. So they helped this um, Ayatollah Shaitan Khomeini to take the power. And when he took the power, so he started to spread, you know, terrorism everywhere. Eight years, Iraq, Iraq okay. war. I think that is the one thing that we shouldn't be confusing. Um, you say that there was no uh, terrorist activism before, you know, the 70s. The, the issue is um, it was there. It just didn't exist in the shape and form and the terminology that we have it today. Okay, we, you mean that the belief we had was... For, you know, we had, we had, for example, uh, vigilant violence uh, within Muslim countries, within societies, within different countries um, forever. We can trace them back as far as, uh, so right now, we can trace big numbers of that back to the Second World War, for example, and before. It's just that after that, societies in the world started opening up more. The caliphate fell in, in the First uh, World War, where it took a long time afterward for these cultures to mix and uh, for the Islamic society to weaken and to uh, become vigilant within themselves to attack um, the the outsiders among them. Uh, that is just a, simply a, a different form of terrorism. Uh, what we have today is a new form of terrorism that people do due to their current social circumstances, due to their access of new weapons and so on. I don't think that has much to do with uh, so somebody funding them or uh, uh, okay conflict has been always everywhere okay but uh, this uh, current conflict could be actually not there at all because uh, if they um, you know these powers that one percent uh, who want to sell their weapons they want to buy cheap oil so if they uh, didn't support uh, a terrorist r regime that is there and spreading terrorism everywhere, okay? If they didn't support that and instead supported the opposition of that regime, okay? Then there will be no Iran-Iraq war. There will be no Syrian war. There would be no Hezbollah in Lebanon. There would be no this Yemen war and all these, uh, you know, these other conflicts in the... the, the uh, well, let me uh, first. Uh, let me. I, I want to address that whole one percent thing because um, the the issue is. Uh that's a very popular narrative. You know, I don't know if, how much how much you know about me, but I was in the past, in my late teenage years, I was extremely interested in communism and socialism okay, and yes. all that. And the whole narrative of uh, the rich leading, uh, you know, the, the, the world and being behind uh, certain things, uh, which descends into very insane conspiracy theories, is very is a very popular genre of fear mongering that is not only popular uh, among, uh, you know, progressive reformist religious movements, but also among uh, secular political movements and even among uh, heavily fundamentalist religious movements. I don't know how much you have, I don't know if you have ever read uh, uh, Sayyid Qutb and his book Milestones, for example, but he has the complete opposite viewpoint. Uh, he advocates for a future of Muslims who are ex uh, extremely political and who take matters into their own hands. He is seen as the forerunner of the jihad that these uh, ISIS and all the others currently are engaged in. And he ironically complains about the very same thing, that in the West, society has been corrupted um, by capitalism and by the rich taking control over things. And now they are trying to corrupt Muslim societies by exerting their power through wealth over the Muslims and trying to lead them uh, astray and away from Islam. He would accuse you, for example, of being their puppet while uh, encouraging uh, people who are like-minded to the Islamists of getting away from such ideas and returning to the to, to the fundamentals of Islam. So you, know, you can bring this whole 1% narrative as much as you want, but it's just we can, we hear it from all sides, and it doesn't really seem to support the the, the message that you mm -hmm. want to convey. Yeah, but Abi, uh, my brother, um, I don't uh, know exactly what 
they mean with that uh, perhaps uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly uh, what the, the person you say, what he means, but what I mean is <clears throat> the fact, okay? And uh, it's a warning as well. They, those who, the, it was a UK uh, uh, organization that said that uh, this 1% have 50% of the world, uh, you know, uh, wealth, and they are going uh, to become uh, much richer by 2050 something, 99% or something. It's not uh, from Muslim or anybody, but anyway, uh, this is the fact that this 1% uh, want to become richer and richer and they don't stop. And hundreds of millions of people, uh, they want to survive. For surviving, they have to sell drugs, they have to sell their body, they have to be corrupted. So this jungle is, uh, for me, is the problem. This is what I get from Islam, that uh, the Satan, which God has, uh, you know, warned us from, and this actually, this was the debate I was going to take with EF Dawa, okay? And unfortunately, after a few minutes, they blocked me because they couldn't answer my question about who Satan is, okay? And uh, <clears throat> I wrote them, I, um, I even, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is it, complained. And they sent me uh, an email. They said that what you say, this is the email, I don't know if uh, you see it, you know? This is yes, yeah, Dava. Yeah. They said that we cannot share, uh, give you, uh, you know, uh, what is it, platform because we don't share your values. But they share their value, uh, you know, the 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 platform with this um, backward uh, ISIS uh, uh, Jew. Okay. I mean, EF uh, Dava is a bunch of uh, dishonest. Uh, hypocrites uh we, we are we are aware of that i'm i'm pretty sure that they wouldn't host somebody like you because you are trying to uh interpret islam differently and soften islam in their view and they want they they want to uh preach the whole radical stuff while trying exactly. to act like everyone is scared of them so another thing is that they say that they are uh, you know gladiators of islam okay if you are gra <laughs> gladi gladiators of islam then you yeah. can prove me that i don't know islam okay simply as that if uh, you know, if you disagree with me, uh, there is a, a Christian guy called Rob. He's every week in their channel. One hour they talk to him and he say Muslim are terrorists. How come you can sh uh, share platform with him, but not with me, even if I'm against the uh, you know. That, that's different. Advice. They want to be they want to be six or five against one, and then they they just want to make it look like they just crushed him. That's how it works. The, the issue ah, is, um, yes. Muji. I mean. Um, this might be an unpopular opinion, especially in uh, in popular culture and in modern times. I honestly don't blame the one percent or the rich at all for things. I think it is entirely normal, uh, and no, the no. entirely normal flow yeah, of I, things. I, Humans I'm are sorry. supposed to. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have to uh, stop you here. It's not. I don't say it's there. I say this is the jungle and the rules of the jungle, which gives them the opportunity. I okay. want to get rid okay. of this uh, this jungle rule. You know, I was going to tell you about these mullahs of Iraq. Okay, mm -hmm. the leader, his name is Ayatollah Khamenei. If you check, he didn't have a single flat before revolution. Now he is estimated that he is two hundred billion dollars rich. So he's killing people, millions of people, because he wants to become richer and richer. So Co this okay, jungle, that's corruption. That's corruption. Yes, I just exactly. don't understand how this is human nature. This is what humans do. Right. Humans, okay. humans want to survive. Humans want to look out for their own survival. As much as humans act like, and I'm sorry to say this, as much as humans act like they are, uh, they, they, they are so much caring and they act out of uh, selflessness and this and that. Even the most uh, supposedly selfless act is usually done for uh your own benefits because you want to uh you, you want to have sympathy you want compassion you want to have something in return it feels good to see others uh happy because it makes you happy in return and so on or you want to get richer you want to be more comfortable and so on but this is corruption this is very normal human nature okay i think uh the the guys in in America or the guys in Hollywood or somebody who is, uh, you know, at the, at the top of banking or fashion companies in Europe and somebody who is at the top of a certain uh, state or ideology in Iran or in the Islamic State, uh, they are motivated intrinsically by the same human nature that just wants to look out for themselves, no matter how much they claim to be doing things for others. That, but, but, but the issue is, where is Islam in all this? And why would we go to Islam? Why would Islam specifically solve this problem? And even if Islam could specifically solve this problem, what, how does that mean that other ideologies and other beliefs cannot solve this problem? How does this mean that Islam is true?
All right, okay. Uh, as I said, that uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> sorry, that uh, this is uh, the there is a tool in Islam, okay. That uh, the tool is the Hajj, okay. That we have to go there once a lifetime, experience the equality, and say I accept it. Yeah, I accept it. Then we have to reject the opposite of the equality, which is the symbol of that is Satan. And Quran explains Satan is the one who spread poverty among you, okay, and lead you to all immor immorality. So <clears throat> this, and then we have to stand towards that uh, equality every day and say, show me the right way to, uh, to Allah. And the wrong way is the jungle and its rules, okay? So the right way is opposite to that. So you said that this human nature, I understand that's human nature, <clears throat> but you give the opportunity, this uh, jungle and its rules give the opportunity to Ayatollah Khomeini, Khamenei, okay? To become billionaires by killing millions of people. If he didn't become billionaires, believe me, he's not sick. He's not sick to kill people, okay? Uh, I give you an example, uh, uh, my brother. Imagine that you have a diamond at your, I don't know, you live in flat or a house or whatever, okay, uh, in, in your house. <clears throat> the diamond costs, uh, okay, seven, billion seven million dollars, for example. How many people on this planet would love to steal that diamond? There are millions of people, okay, that would even travel all the way to USA <clears throat> if they had the opportunity to steal it. Now imagine that you live in a world, okay, where money doesn't exist, we are all equal, we share everything with each other, we love one another, we work and live for Allah, okay, because uh, <clears throat> he tells us for God, because he tells us that I want you to live like this. So, and that diamond costs nothing, zero dollar, okay, you think anybody on this planet will travel all the way to USA to steal a stone. No, the opportunity is there, my brother. Get the opportunity away from them. These tobacco companies that kill five million people every year, I have counted is three, 33 nuclear bombs that drop on Hiroshima, okay? They do it because they want to become richer and richer. If you take away this money, believe me, all of them, they close, not even, a, pack of cigarettes will be produced because they, you know, and other things that uh, uh, producing. Uh, I, I, I understand this. I just feel like I'm, I'm getting back to, I just feel like I'm going back to my late teenage years and talking about okay. the problem yeah. of capitalism <laughs> and imperialism and how we should bring okay. socialism to the world. No, it's not I, I, do, I don't see, I don't I see where it's Islam. Islam. I say it's Islam. Islam. Okay. Okay. okay but it's basically the same thing, what you're preaching right now to okay. me. It, yeah. it sounds like, I don't know. But right, the, here's, here's the thing. I mean, the Quran says, for example, uh, Allah will never accept those who seek a religion other than Islam and in the hereafter they will uh, be losers. Okay. It says, can those who, you know, uh, who, who, who practice and those who don't practice uh, be considered equal it says uh, those who don't uh, believe are the worst of creatures and th these okay. and all these things you're right. talking about equality but where do you get that from I don't see it in the scripture nor in the history of Islam all right <clears throat> there are uh, lots of them uh, I can uh, give you uh, <clears throat> let me um, to give you about that oh, you have a very uh, you have an, uh, a utopia as it seems, but... Yes, yes, uh, I understand, but uh, okay, for example, <clears throat> there is a verse in Quran, chapter 28, verse 5, and we wanted to confer favor upon those who were oppressed, mustazafin, in Islam. In Islam, there are two, just two, uh, uh, you know, um, classes, mustazafin and mustakbirin, oppressed and oppressor, okay? Confer the uh, favor upon those who were oppressed on earth and make them leaders and make them uh, inheritors. So, and there are many other verses. So Quran says that one day these oppressed will rule and inherit the planet. So when there are two uh, classes and the oppressed will rule and inherit the planet, so there will be no a new class called oppressed and oppressor. So the oppressor and oppressed will disappear. And as long as this uh, jungle rule exists, okay, there will always be oppressed and oppressors. There are lots of verses of Quran that I can bring for you uh, about that. About that, you said disbelief. Okay, unfortunately, this disbelief has been, uh, my brother, it has been um, mis 
uh, interpreted. Quran says kuffar, okay? And kuf in uh, Islam is oppression, okay? So um, I give you a good example. If you check this... What, what about those who deny the signs of Allah? It says that also very many times okay. in, in the Quran. Yes, uh, let me... Uh, can you check chapter 16, verse 83, please? Uh, I, will, I will give it to you, okay? Sh Quran shall I read 16, it verse what? 83. 83, okay. Yes. Can you read it for me, please? Uh, one moment. I like to read from a specific site with all the translations here. Yes. yes. Uh, they recognize the favor of Allah, then they deny it, and most of them are disbelievers. All right, stop, please. Stop. They recognize the favor of Allah. Who are they? Disbelievers. Should be yeah? in context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, they disbelievers. How can most of them be disbelievers? Most of them, not all of them. Language is information, my brother, okay? When Quran say most of them means not all of them and doesn't say disbelieve. It say most of them are kafir. In Arabic, if you can read it, yeah, it say most of them are kafir. So not all disbelievers are kafir, okay? I would say I would say this is just a very <laughs> typically poor uh, all right. text in the Quran because it, said, it, it clearly talks about uh, those who turn away and then it says they reject the favors of Allah uh, after, they, of after they recognize it and most yeah. of them are, are disbelievers, are kafir. No, uh, all, most of them are kafir, okay? Now okay. read other because here... <clears throat> they, they, uh, some uh, interpreted uh, disbelievers. Some uh, interpret, uh, sorry, uh, translated differently. Despite they translate always uh, kofar as disbeliever, because here it doesn't match that most of them are disbelievers. They are all disbelievers, but most of them are kafir. So it is not only one verse. There are lots of verses, and it's a whole concept. Okay, and set of belief that I believe that uh, as long as, of course, it's ideal that you. Uh, become a Muslim and you fight for that uh, world that, that Allah teaches us every day. Show me the right way. That's the idea. But if uh, there is a verse as well says that uh, prophets and those, it doesn't say Muslims, and those who spread the message of this, which is equality, the killer of them is equal equal to the killer of a prophet, okay? So even if you are not a Muslim and you get killed for spreading the message of equality, you are considered as a, you know, uh, high, uh, you know, level in Islam, okay? So mm -hmm. this is what not only I believe, I'm following a, a Muslim organization also, and that Muslim organization also believe in that, and we are fighting for, um, you know, for your rights, for... Uh, everyone's rights, and we believe in uh, an equal world where we share everything with each other. Okay. Here, here's what I don't understand. It says, uh, it, "This is talking about people uh, are given signs; they're given the favor of Allah, but then they turn away uh, and they turn their backs." Uh, and then it says they recognized uh, the favor of Allah, but then they deny it, and most of them are, are disbelievers. For here, especially here, the word deny is not the same as uh, the word for disbelievers, I believe, right? It's, yes, it's a, but in Arabic it says, and most of them are al kafirun. Yun -kir, yun uh, yes. uh, they, they, they reject it. They reject it, and then. Uh, Oh, and, and and then and then it's and then and then it says uh, they are deniers or disbelievers. Yes. Uh, I think I think this can be perfectly reasonable in saying uh, they deny or, or they 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 reject the favors of Allah. Most of them are disbelievers. It might be that some of them are uh, you know are, are not, and some of them have certain things on their minds. The Quran separates uh, quite often between the hypocrites. For example, at, at the very beginning of the Quran in chapter two, it uh, makes a distinction between uh, those hypocrites who claim to believe but don't believe, or who claim to uh, understand or who claim to follow, but then they uh, secretly reject or uh, you know, put away the signs of Allah, and those are distinct from the kafirun, who are the outright deniers mm -hmm. of the signs of Allah. It might be that, it, that it's making a distinction here. I just, or, or it might be an inconsistency or an incoherence. What I don't understand is how this relates to uh, to the Quran saying that those who deny will have no luck in the hereafter. No, uh, okay. It's uh, usually everywhere I read, it is about, you know, that. Uh, they spread uh, corruption, okay? Those who disbelieve, they spread corruption because Allah says that all I do is 
I want, uh, I uh, guide you to good deeds and uh, pre prevent you, uh, sorry, uh, I have to find that, um, uh, so uh, of course there are uh, there is another one uh, chapter 98 verse 1 those who commit kufr among the people of the scripture so if it's kufr is disbelief then cannot be among the people of the, uh, you know scripture either all of them they are disbelievers. What, what, what about what about those who believe that uh that Jesus is God yeah i say that kufr is uh, different, okay? As I said, that you can believe. Uh, of course, it's ideal is that uh, you believe in Allah and Islam. But if, as long as for me, that I read Quran, Mother Teresa, uh, she is a she was a great woman, and uh, or even uh, Mahatma Gandhi, who saved uh, hundreds of millions of people from oppression. Okay, he was much better. And not only me, that there are scholars, Islamic scholars who say that uh, they are much better than many, many uh, scholars of Islam who uh, spread corruption, you know, in the land, uh, on the planet. Such a person is much higher uh, according, because it is a interpretation. Okay, okay. What, what, what I don't understand, understand here. What I don't Sorry. understand here is the, what, I don't, what I don't understand here is the doesn't the Quran also refer to with the same word to those who uh, believe that Jesus is God or who believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Doesn't it also refer to them as uh, with, with the same word with kufr with uh, I don't I don't exactly remember the wording here, but it's the same word, right? Yes, and uh, I understand, but I say that uh, it is uh, the perhaps. Uh, you know, this is um, mostly what Allah uh, understand the, the true meaning of the, some verses. He says that in chapter 3, verse 7, okay? But <clears throat> what I have learned from many other uh, verses of Quran is that, uh, uh, what is it? Kuf is uh, uh, oppression because Allah only guides you to uh, good uh, deeds and prevent you from immorality okay so if you reject that and you do and uh, I, I, sh I showed you that most of them are kafirun because uh, kof is uh, oppression kof is bad deeds so that's what Allah uh, is against okay Allah is going to punish people okay um, and, the, the, of course, the, this is what as I said this is my understanding and uh, the, there are scholars okay I know, I, as I said, I follow a, a Muslim organization. They have scholars and uh, we believe differently. So some people um, might believe that you have to be killed as a- Okay, he, he, here, here is the issue. I asked you about the, I asked you about the whole issue with uh, those who disbelieve because the Quran, you are saying that people are, you know, people are equal. You're talking about equality among peoples and this and that. Uh, the Quran clearly says that those who don't believe and those who reject the belief in Allah are, uh, you know, are, are not equal. They are evil. They are worst of creatures. They will go to hell and this and that. You say that uh, the word kafir may refer to uh, oppression or to somebody, something else. But if we open this specific Quran verse here, uh, which I'm talking about, which is 572 and even the following, uh, uh, one after that, this certainly says, uh, this clearly says, they have certainly disbelieved, Kefaru, uh, who say Allah is the Messiah, the son of Mary, while the Messiah has said, O children of Israel, worship him, uh, and so on. Indeed, he who associates others with Allah, clearly in reference to those who worship Jesus, Allah has forbidden him paradise, and his refuge is the fire, and there are not for the wrongdoers any helpers. In the following verse after this, it clearly says, uh, they have certainly disbelieved, who say Allah is the third of three. Uh, there is no God except one God, which uh, implies that the Trinity or you know the belief in the, in three entities is uh, is polytheism, and it says that them ex uh, expects a painful punishment in the hereafter, and they will stay there forever. So this is clearly about not believing in the message of Islam and believing in a different religion instead. So okay. I cannot really reconcile that with what you are telling me. All right, uh, but on another side, okay, these are uh, uh, what I understand that uh, Allah was talking to people at that time and was referring to uh, certain Christians because there are many that, verses. That, that many verses no, many verses. For example, as I said here, chapter 98, verse 1, those who committed kufr among the people of scripture and the polistes did not give up uh, kufr until their 
came uh, to them clear evidence. Okay, so uh, those when it say those who commit kufr means not all of them. Another uh, chapter ninety eight verse six. Indeed, they who committed kufr among the people of uh, scripture and the polistis will be in the fire of hell. Of, uh, yeah, it, it yeah. says among because it re it's referring to the to the people of the scripture by the Quran's understanding. I think it makes it quite clear uh, in two different phases. Those people of the those people of the book before the arrival of Islam and those after his arrival. What it, uh, the distinction that it makes here is that before Muhammad arrived, before his final message arrived, those people were righteous. But after Muhammad arrived with the Quran, if they now reject Muhammad, then they have uh, become disbelievers, which is why it says uh, kufr among those who you know who are who are people of the of, of the book because okay. not all of the all of the people of the book are kafir those who okay. reject muhammad after his arrival are kafir okay. according to the islamic understanding i think that's very well established in islamic yes. uh theology all right and um but uh, chapter 60 verse 8 to 9 allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you this is about uh, everybody it's that we do not fight you uh because of your religion and do not expel you from your homes uh, from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. Uh, then in chapter 3, verse... Okay, but what, 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 what does justly mean? Can you define uh, just? Can you define justly, objectively? Just, uh, there are many verses uh, that explain that we have to be, you know, forgiving and, um, you know... Uh, I mean, the, I cannot just uh, right now explain for you, but uh, chapters... Is, there, there is no objective understanding of what justice is. That it, It's completely dependent on the, the point of view of whoever defines justice. In the uh, When it comes to the context of Islam, justice, uh, if we read the Quran chapter 9, verse 23, it clearly says, uh, those who don't believe in Allah and his messenger and this and that, fight them until they are uh, subdued and pay the jizya. And in the following verse, it explains that they, have, that they are uh, de deluded and Allah will fight them because they believe in Jesus and in Ezra mistakenly it says so that is justice according to the uh, Islamic Islamic religion according to the uh, to, to the Islamic laws and schools of jurisprudence killing apostates who leave Islam is justice punishing uh, people who commit adultery is justice killing people who engage in blasphemy as we see in the hadith for example which you may or may not fully accept is justice I mean j justice is not really if it said do not kill anybody for this and this and that we could probably accept that but if it says justice this, that's very arbitrary okay uh, uh, Allah I, I read for you my brother now Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you so Allah just you know forbid you from those who fight you and kill you and we know that uh, even uh, you know those verses is just for those who attack you you know at that time and uh, we, don't, we, know we, don't from, know that. Yeah, from, we know from the history of uh, Islam that when <clears throat> uh, the uh, Prophet Muhammad, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Um, um, uh, asked them to for ceasefire, and they accepted the uh, the pagans, uh, the ten years ceasefire. He accepted right away, okay, and uh, they didn't attack. And then when he occupied Mecca, he could uh, easily kill Abu Sufyan and his wife because uh, Abu Sufyan killed hundreds of Muslims, but he forgave everyone, even Mecca residents. But let's well, say, if, uh, if I was a political leader and I was in the minority and I fought with these people who are obviously in control of my home and who are in the majority and yeah. that I barely, uh, you know, measured up to now, I would probably also make some compromises and come to a peace agreement, which is why in the Treaty of Qadabia, for example, Muhammad made compromises and his followers were outraged about them. And they were even they even ex openly expressed their anger to mm -hmm. him. 
until he justified it and calmed them down. This is known in Islamic history and in Islamic jurisprudence as a compromise due to uh, the given circumstances. But as soon as, the, here, here is the issue, he conquers Mecca, he initially forgives people, but in the next year he says the polytheists will no longer be allowed to come to the Kaaba and continue their practices. From now on they are forbidden because they are unclean, they are filthy. Uh, after that he uh, goes through the land and commands the destruction of Dhul Khalasa, which is a temple in Yemen, which resembles the Kaaba. He has, um, he and his companions and successors have all the polytheistic temples in the land destroyed upon his orders and the orders of the, of the caliphate, which is why they are lost, and has uh, their 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 caretakers killed. So clearly there is an element of injustice according to them and even according to our modern understanding here, which according to Islam is not injustice, it is justice. The Quran verse that you uh, gave as an example, 60 verse 9, says that Allah does not forbid you from being uh, kind or f f from being uh, just yes. toward them just toward them, which again doesn't mean anything because the Quran uh, also orders many other things and Muhammad also ordered to be quite cruel toward groups of people, including to, including toward people like me who left Islam, which is why it is the scholarly consensus among Muslims to kill apostates, which I think is not justice, but according to Islam it is. Okay, when you say Islam, my brother, you have to distinguish between the Islam that uh, I believe and uh, there are uh, scholars, I, I told you, I follow an organization that also uh, fighting against Iranian regime in uh, <clears throat> 42 years. And they fought not because they were, you know, disagree with uh, some verses of Quran or some uh, kind of prayers. They fought against uh, I, uh, this Ayatollah Shaitan Khomeini because he was going to oppress people. He was going to, uh, the first people who came out and uh, demonstrated against him for this forced hijab was this Muslim organization that you have no right to force uh, the religion on anybody, okay? And uh, <clears throat> this, uh, you know, apostate, somebody asked uh, also, um, it, even um, but, uh, there are uh, scholars who cannot, you know, uh, defend it. There are scholars who I saw even on Peace TV, there was a scholar, you know, this Peace TV uh, belonged to uh, Zakir Naik. Zakir mm -hmm. Naik himself, he believed that uh, apostate should get killed. But there was a scholar on his channel in front of a crowd. He was trying to show through Quran that this uh, uh, apostasy law is against Quran because Quran says clearly those who believed and disbelieved, those who believed and disbelieved again. So uh, never Quran says that you have to kill them. There is nowhere in Quran's written. And, uh, it, ne it never says you should not kill them which is why there is no direct contradiction, which is why they agreed, which is why Muslim of scholars course. vastly agreed that this is no contradiction to the Quran. Yes, no, there, uh, because uh, there is a contradiction uh, with Quran is that, uh, what is it? There is no uh, compulsion to religion. You cannot force uh, anybody to Islam, okay? So people have to uh, accept Islam. That's a great uh, contradiction to uh, to Islam. And then the same- I, I would disagree. I think uh, when you look at Quran chapter 9, verse 29, which says that you should fight those who don't believe and should force them to certain uh, certain conditions. And, yes. and, and also after that, Muhammad says clearly that uh, with the disbelievers, you should offer Islam to them and give them the choices of accepting Islam, uh, dying, fleeing, or becoming, uh, you know, uh, in, inferiors. This okay. may not be directly forcing Islam Islam, as in, uh, say, I convert to Islam or else, but this is technically forcing. All right. Uh, you clearly <clears throat> uh, take it as disbelief. As I said, it's a kuffar, okay? And it was only that time, okay, that time that they were fighting against these pagans who were attacking them, okay? No, <clears throat> and that's after, not true. Yeah, that's baseless. That's not okay, true. Okay, let me see. Uh, when they uh, made this uh, uh, ceasefire treaty, they were not attacking them. They were pre preaching to them. Allah even says that when you capture them, preach for them, uh, they may hear your, your words and they convert to Islam. So, <clears throat> because is, those who don't know, yeah. Yeah, so those who don't know, okay? Yeah. Some people know and they, they reject it anyway and they want to fight you. Uh, anyway, uh, my brother, this is what I understand from uh, Islam. And then that the source of that, uh, you know, uh, who said that kill apostate, the source of that said uh, that uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, spread the moon to half, 
which you don't believe, I don't believe either. Uh, why I have to believe uh, the other one? Well, I don't believe in this one because this one goes also against Quran. Quran never said that Prophet Muhammad is beneath the moon. Okay, but uh, anyway, uh, my uh, issue is here that uh, there is a <clears throat> uh, you have uh, you have cancer in your body and you have pain everywhere in your body. Okay, I uh, th there is a doctor that has this cure for your cancer. So this doctor maybe have done something in the past or that you disagree, maybe, you know, slap a, a patient, but the cure, you accept that this cure, uh, this uh, medicine cure your, your cancer. I urge you to take that, uh, you know, cure so that we live in a world where, because I'm a human being, I don't want to live in a world where children are dying, are dying of, of hunger or get killed by bomb. I'm sure that you don't want either to, uh, to live in such a jungle. Okay, so but let's. That, that, that is just an appeal to emotion. I'm sorry to interrupt you on that, Muji, but that is that is an that is demagoguery. I'm sorry, but that, so that's mean, an, oh, a, I understand. That, so that's that an appeal to no emotion. Way. There is no way out of this jungle. No, I no, I, that, that's that's never what I said. I'm saying okay. uh, you cannot. I, I could say, guys, don't you see all the people who are dying and all the people who are starving? Please, we must do this. Why will you not accept this? That is an appeal to emotion. Uh, everyone can say that. Uh, people of different beliefs can say that. People of different political ideologies say that I experienced it myself uh, as well I simply don't see how Islam would come into uh, the uh, you know the, the equation and solve this problem it's like um, you want to give an example of of, of medicine of healing I could uh, compare Islam to a um, to somebody coming to me a salesman and offering to me some alternative medication that is not uh, proven to be helpful in any way on the contrary there are lots of examples that it is incredibly harmful incredibly dangerous that it has terrible side effects i would not say hey yeah there are problems in the world and yours will solve the problem. No, no. What I would say is, yes, there are problems in the world. Yes, the things that you address are problems. Yes, there is a sickness. <coughs> yes, there is a disease. But your solution is certainly not the solution. Because okay. I, there, there, I don't see anything in that. No reason to accept your solution. Uh, no reason to dismiss all the bad impacts of your solution. I simply don't buy it. So let's talk about that. That's uh, that's the best uh, thing, you know, not to talk about 1400 years ago, that many things we might not uh, understand. So let's talk about today. We are. I, I would like to say that you are a prophet, okay? And if you give me the solution, I will uh, follow you because I converted to Islam, all right? Uh -huh. And if you give me the cell, because I live in this, I don't want to live in this uh, jungle that uh, children are uh, losing their legs on a landmine because somebody wants to sell its weapons uh, and become richer. So I want to live in a world where everybody is happy. Uh, and I said that it is a fact, okay, that the solution is to get rid of the source, which, uh, you know, uh, gives this opportunity to someone to come all the way to USA and steal that diamond from your home, okay, to get rid of that opportunity so that that diamond is nothing, zero dollar. Nobody will come and steal it, okay? Nobody will produce uh, opium. Farmers of Afghanistan, they produce 90% of the world opium because it gives them more money. And farmers of, in Sweden, uh, farmers of Sweden, they don't produce anything, any, uh, I mean, any drugs because they are well off, okay? So let's create that system for everybody that they don't need to do bad deeds. And and, and, and how does your uh, understanding of Islam, um, if, if you can very briefly uh, yes, yes. say this, how, how, how is it that um, the... 99% understanding of Islam could not address this problem properly, but your understanding of Islam can not only address, but also totally solve this problem. Can you briefly explain how exactly that would make sense? Uh, okay. <clears throat> First of all, there is a, uh, also um, a teaching in Islam that there is a way out, not only Islam in Christianity and Judaism as well, that there is a Messiah who comes and save us. Okay. There is a way out of this jungle. But um, uh, it's not that God will send somebody to save us, but there is a promise from God, and I gave you that verse of Quran as well, that one day the oppressed will rule and inherit the planet. So there are lots of lots of, uh, uh, you know, um, what is it, uh, verses and uh, 
uh, hadiths that uh, indicate on that that there is a way out and one day will happen. Prophet Muhammad Bismillah says that even one day is left from the, this world, okay, uh, what is it? Uh, <clears throat> somebody comes from my family and establish uh, the uh, justice on this planet as much as they were in justice. I'm, I'm sorry, but what, what you're telling me is um, we just have to accept it. You cannot explain how exactly this uh, I'm going to say solves, that. solves the problem. You're saying we just have to wait for the guy to. No, no, no. I, I'm not. I'm not going to say that because I don't believe that a guy comes. Okay. I say that. I say to everybody that we are the Messiah because the guidance is there. And then one more thing is that somebody uh, wrote about that uh, prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, yeah, that he said that the judgment day, first of all, it's against Quran. Quran says that if they ask you, say that the, uh, the knowledge of the, the Sa'at, yeah, the, the, the Qiyamah, the end, is only with Allah and you don't know. It. So what I explained for you, that the meaning of creation is that we get out of this jungle and live in that human world and nothing will happen to this planet until we pass that line. OK, so this prophecy is absolutely because otherwise Allah has this. Uh, what is it? Allah has failed. OK, I say Allah has failed if it's going to. Uh, uh, get he has, world. he has. It doesn't make right. any sense to me at all. Right. all. But for me, yeah, I understand. But for me, <laughs> yes, my brother, for me, he hasn't, and it will happen. Okay. Okay, it's but how? I, I simply okay. don't. I simply I can't. I, can, I simply can't get them. I mean, yes. the, these these are very nice words, but I don't see how right. that, I told how it you. makes sense. This it's uh, the way is I told you. We stand towards uh, the equality which happens in Mecca. Okay, we go there and experience. So we stand towards that equality and prostrate to equality. That show me the right way. And Allah has shown us the right way. Fourteen hundred years years. Okay, that the way is to get rid of the inequality and live equal. It is the way out of this jungle. So simple as that. Let's share everything with each other. Love. Uh, you know, one another, all right, and get rid of this system that gives opportunity to that one percent of the world. Uh, okay, okay, so I got yes. it. We need we need equality. Okay. Yes. I have a solution. Yes. Good. Come, come to me. Gather yes. around me. Uh -huh. uh, come. To, let's build a compound together. I will manage it. I will be at the center of it, and okay. I will make sure that we can preserve equality for everyone forever. This okay. is this will solve all the problems in the world, and right. I will I will openly preach that everybody is always equal to me and to everyone else among each other. Right. How how is how is that different? Why would okay. if equality is the solution, uh, and we say well Islam will just bring it? Well, how will it be brought by Islam? How is Islam related to this? How is Islam the trigger to this equality? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Some people say I should start such a cult. Maybe I, I'm thinking about it right now. I don't know. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. No, the thing is that uh, if you, you uh, I, I said that uh, there is a verse as well in Quran that if you preach that, okay, and you get killed, uh, AP, if you preach that, which is called Qist in Quran, okay, which is equality, if you mm -hmm. preach that and you get killed, you are martyr. Despite you don't believe, uh, you know, in God and so on. So uh, some Muslim now will be, oh, yeah, how do you say that, okay? But what, this is what I understand. If you preach that and fight for that, okay? But what I say is that uh, the, the magnet of, uh, uh, what is it, um, uh, Islam is much stronger than what you say. Because what you say is just, um, you know, oh, he's crazy. <laughs> he's a human being, okay? But what Allah says, if you believe that this is what Allah says, the almighty God, the creator says, then that's help much better. It gives more energy to people and more belief. This is what I I understand, okay? Well, but Christianity you, also says that all humans are equal before God. Yeah. Uh, all, all are created in the image of God and all are equal before all, all men are equal. Yes. It, 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 it says that uh, it, in, the, in the Buddhist understanding, you will learn that you, we are we are all none of us is supposed to be attached to things and be superior to each other that is the, the cause of suffering so these are uh these are ideas thoughts that are spread ac around the world and that naturally emerge because that's how the course of things in nature go i right. simply don't understand i mean is islam can make the claim my point was that i can make the claim as well my point was not that i will be as successful as islam i don't even want to be 
maybe I do, right. I don't know. But yeah. uh, my, my point was everybody can make the claim, you know? Yeah, okay, let's uh, everybody make the claim, but let's everybody make this claim that this uh, jungle and the, uh, you know, rules of the jungle that gives opportunity to people to become richer by killing others, by being corrupted, you know, by all these bad deeds. Let's get rid of it. If you can, I, I love it. I will follow you, okay? But, but how Islam Islam explicitly teaches that those who believe and those who disbelieve are not equal. Islam explicitly preaches that certain people are not equal to each other. It preaches that genders are not equal to each other. We we just went through it. It, it preaches that uh, those who deny and those who believe in certain things are evil, horrible, wicked, whatever it is. How I mean, we just went through that. How can we accept that Islam would then be the system that brings the equality? I would say, I'm sorry to to sound this way, but I would say Christianity is much more uh, egalitarian. I would say Buddhism is much more egalitarian. I would say many other ideologies in the world are much more uh, egalitarian. Uh, the ones that we have right now, secular ideas are more egalitarian. My own views are more. So it, it, it's certainly not Islam. Islam is the opposite to that. Islam also explicitly tells people to fight those who don't listen and fight to those who don't believe and to subjugate them and this and that it wants to bring equality among believers by force which doesn't make sense okay uh, i told you that the, those verses are just for that period of war okay and you have to this is uh, you have uh, to prove is, that well, yes uh, but the proof is that uh, when prophet muhammad uh, occupied Mecca. He didn't kill anybody. He just, uh, you know, That's forgave true. everybody. Okay, he forgave everybody. And uh, during that period of uh, ceasefire, they didn't fight anybody. They were just preaching. Okay, so this is uh, okay. For, first off, first off, that is false because while while in Mecca, he uh, did at first initiate a uh, a time of. Uh, of inner peace surrounding the Mecca, he did immediately implement discriminatory laws towarding the polytheists and their religious practices. And at the same time, he did send armies and people to take care of, uh, to violently take care of other people throughout the Arabian Peninsula, which also continued after his death. And he did preach uh, offensive uh, fighting for to, against those who, who disbelieve. And the Quran is very explicit in what uh, is disbelief. It doesn't say those those uh, who believe uh, that Jesus is God and who did this and this and that are disbelievers. It merely says those who believe Jesus is God are disbelievers. Mm -hmm. Kofra, of course, is, uh, you know, um, covering the truth, okay? That's also another meaning of the Kof, but uh, mostly is oppression, okay? Mostly is bad deeds. And if you say, um, I don't know, um, uh, what is it exactly, that part that you say he sent to kill people and so on, uh, this is, uh, you know, totally against what the uh, Quran says, that fight as long as they fight. And when they stop fighting, you stop fighting too, because Allah doesn't like those who start to fight. Okay. So uh, Quran clearly It also says, says fight uh, them. Yes. Fight as long as they fight. Okay. Quran no, it also, it also says in 929, fight them. I never said the Quran yeah. is consistent. You expect that the Quran is absolutely consistent with its own yeah. thoughts because you believe that it has been divinely revealed. I don't. I look at the Quran as a regular book and try to fact check it. What I see oh. is that there are many inconsistencies. At the beginning, it says that the Christians and Jews have nothing to fear. Later, it says, uh, may Allah destroy them. They are disbelievers. If, if, at first, it says, don't fight. Uh, don't do this and this and that. It, it, it never actually says says uh, specifically don't fight these people or don't fight anybody. Uh, later it very clearly says fight those who don't believe until they do this and this and that. And it doesn't refer to specific people. It is very general in its, in its language. So okay, uh, I don't see it. Uh, this is, uh, first of all, uh, as I said, it's not uh, don't believe. Those, uh, it's about kuffar, those who commit oppression. <clears throat> okay. And uh, uh, what is it? As I said, uh, mostly um, uh, this is what <clears throat> I get from Islam, that uh, we are going to get out of this uh, trouble. And I found the answer in uh, Islam. And I want uh, that everybody also, uh, you know, believe, accept that we have to get out of the, uh, <clears throat> what is that? 
Quran chapter 9, verse 29. Fight those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful and who do not adopt the religion of truth from those who were given the scripture. Fight okay. until they give the jizya willingly while they are humbled. In the next verse within context, it says, the Jews say, Ezra is the son of Allah, which is false. And the Christians say, the Messiah is the son of Allah. That is their statement from their mouths. They imitate the saying of those who disbelieved. May Allah destroy them. Uh, there, there, there is no reference here to that. This refers to specific people. It's quite general. It's a, it's a, exactly about those people and that time. Okay, is uh, uh, like, like you know, it's like <clears throat> my brother says that second. That, that's World what you War, say. Yes, yes, like say in Second World War, go and fight and kill Germans. Okay, but is a, uh, uh, you know, is only for that period after you made peace. Now Germans that, that's are, are equivalent. Okay, okay. That's uh, a so false this, equivalence. Yeah. This is what I believe and uh, what I know from Quran and uh, <clears throat> many scholars also accept it that uh, it is we have no right to uh, oppress people we have no right to you know force anybody uh, like Rahaf the din as well force anybody to Islam uh, and Quran says that I forbid you from those who fight you and kill you not those who don't fight you and kill you and Quran says that fight as long as they fight okay so um, I would okay. like to would you, I just have one question yes if what you're saying is true why does the Quran not say fight those who uh, oppress and who do these and these actions why does it instead say fight those who don't believe in what you it believe? says fight those who fight you and no it doesn't well, okay okay i'm talking about uh, for example this 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 quran verse if it is referring to specific people who were oppressive which is why they should be fought why does it not say fight those who oppress you and who fight you and this and this and that but instead in the verse explicitly says fight those who don't believe in allah and yes. in the last day and what you believe okay so uh, it is it came exactly that time, and they knew who are they going to fight. They were but that was not my question. That was not my question. It clearly says, fight those who don't believe in Allah. I know. Quran was talking to people of that time, uh, Muslims of that time, that they were fighting against these kuffar, kuffar which were the pagans who were attacking them. And they knew that Quran is talking about these people, not about people of other countries, okay? Or, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, about... Today's uh, uh, people of uh, the world. Quran is not talking about that. I have to go and fight the uh, AP. Okay, he says that uh, I do not forbid you to be just towards uh, AP. Okay, that he doesn't believe there is no compulsion. So this is a whole, you know, concept. It's not just one verse that you take. Okay, Quran says so like this, like ISIS. They they think like this that okay Quran says like this I have the, to go the vast, out the vast majority of scholars think that nine verse twenty nine is, is okay. a general statement. Uh, they, the they, vast majority of scholars think think the yes, same thing yeah. because it's unfortunately they, they also uh, think that uh, we have to stone the uh, adulterers okay yeah. which is which is, is terrible because uh, that the person who wrote that you know in uh, in that hadith he says that uh, Quran is incomplete because uh, I have had debate with uh, scholars. Uh, and uh, they, they, you know, uh, one of them was, uh, his name was Sheikh uh, Masari from London. He was so ashamed that he, to share the video with me because he said that, oh, Omar radiallahu, he was old, he didn't remember, he said this hadith, okay? Because the hadith says that Quran is incomplete. There is a yeah. verse of Quran is missing, okay? And they never think that what, how come, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, it was uh, two verses actually, yeah? I don't know if you know the hadith. Two verses of Quran missing because a goat ate them. <laughs> those, mm -hmm. those verses of Quran. So these scholars, unfortunately, somebody wrote that. How come that all these scholars have uh, are wrong? Because many of them are businessmen, and they, you know, religion for them is business. They have studied long time. Now they are going to make money from that religion. And if they go against the majority, they will lose their followers. They will lose their, you know, their income so that's why they go with the mainstream so that's why they don't stand against you know these uh, wrong teachings and <clears throat> you know they don't question such a things if they question then they get attacked okay well i i think i think there's good reason to believe that the the, the quran is entirely um the quran is completely unreliable because we don't know what belongs in it what doesn't belong in it we we, we rely on a on a chain of uh 
explanations to how it came into existence and how it was compiled, a chain that is not reliable by historical standards, only by Islamic standards, and so on. So there, there is no real reason for me to believe that okay. that the Quran was divinely revealed or anything, well, which is why it is, it's understandable to me that some things may not be in the Quran, but may have been added to it later or made up uh interpreted onto it like the stoning for example mm. it might in in, it might indeed be true that the quran uh never included such a verse but that that was made up by omar for example because he just wanted people to be punished that way might be might be entirely true that's completely plausible to me that's because mm. i don't think that the quran is in any way uh divine or miraculous yeah but but we, we don't have to follow that because it, it goes against quran quran never said to stone um, you know, uh, adulterers. Okay, according okay. my my okay. knowledge, it, it would be logically going against the Quran if the Quran expli explicitly say don't stone people. It doesn't necessarily go against the Quran just because the Quran doesn't say. Okay, do can I say something? <laughs> can sure. I say something? <clears throat> sure. uh, everywhere Quran mentions stoning is about uh, pagans. That don't do this, they will stone you. Don't do that, they will stone you. So stoning was a practice by pagans. So Quran would never take that, uh, you know, uh, stoning. Uh, and this was actually done by, uh, uh, I, th I think it was practiced by Romans. And uh, they injected this to, in Bible and uh, uh, Torah. And they wanted to inject this, the same people in Quran, but they couldn't. So that's well, it, why- It also says that they crucified, uh, they tried to crucify the Messiah, uh, but they couldn't. And then it tells the Muslims to crucify uh, people who act a certain way in chapter 5, verse 33. Yeah, I know. It even says cut off, cut off their hands and feet or exile them or kill them or crucify them. Okay, the Quran doesn't say that, my brother. I'm so sorry. I have to say that. Quran, that, that I, I, I know. Look, uh, I will uh, tell you now. Uh, that's, uh, uh, what is it? Let's uh, talk about that. Uh, that's uh, about, first, uh, that's not an order for Muslim. It's a passive, uh, you know, verb. So it says that is what happened to them in this war, okay? By whom, I will tell you now. Uh, by whom? Chapter 7, verse 124 says, Pharaoh says, I will certainly cut off your hands and feet on opposite sides. Okay. Uh, then crucify you all. Chapter 20, verse 75, uh, 1, sorry. Mm -hmm. He, Pharaoh said, have you believed in him is about Moses, this one. Bef uh, have you believed in him before uh, taking my permission? He is surely um, your great one uh, who has taught you magic. So I will cut off your hands and feet from altered, uh, alternate sides and I will uh, crucify you on uh, the trunks of the palm trees and so on, okay? So I understand, this, but this but is what what pagans do to themselves. The one who lives by sword die by sword. It doesn't say in that verse that all Muslims do this to them. It says it is a passive verb. Okay, that it is what happens to okay, them. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm talking about Quran chapter five verse thirty three, where it says where it's where it where it doesn't talk about any such context. It clearly says in the penalty for those who wage war against Allah and His Messenger and uh, no, that, cause no, cause corruption in the land is none but that they should be killed or crucified or that their hands and feet should be cut off from opposite it, sides. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't say penalty. It says the recompense. Okay, it okay, is what okay. happens to them. It is what happens to them. So, uh, um, my brother, chapter 3, verse 7 says that, uh, uh, you know, some verses of Quran are unspecific, okay? And the, uh, the knowledge of that is only by Allah and those firm in this, this is This is not an ambiguous verse. It clearly says the punishment of those who don't believe in Allah and his messenger or w whatever, okay, recompense. J jaza, jaza means, <laughs> jaza is, is the Arabic word. It is, it okay. is the, 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 the punishment mm -hmm. as in, yeah, recompense, the response to it yes. is that their hands and feet are cut off or they are killed or crucified or exiled. This is what the verse clearly says. This does not report us about something that happened it says this is what should be done okay it says uh, uh, also the recompense of those who fight uh, god and then the, the explanation is the repeated use of the passive voice is not a coincidence it is to uh, indicate that 
the acts are not instructions. But who says, who says that? This is a, a what is it? A, the interpretation of this work. Uh, who, sorry, whose interpretation work. is that? This is the interpretation of the, um, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Professor Edip. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Edip Yuxel okay. is a reformist Muslim who makes very uh, outrageous reinterpretations okay. that have nothing to do with the verse here at hand. But, it clearly says here okay, on but screen. It says, it says and uh, I showed you the verses. So you mean that Allah followed Pharaoh's rule? Yeah. 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 So Allah. Uh, Followed a barbaric rules of Pharaoh. No, no. Yes, yes, th th that, that's that's what I meant because you said stoning can't be within Islam because stoning is mentioned as something that the pagans did, so Islam yeah. would never do that. Which yeah. is why I told you it also says that crucifixion was something that uh, those bad people did, but it also tells people to tells Muslims to crucify people, as okay. the, as clearly demonstrated here. It oh. says. The penalty for those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and strive upon earth uh, to, to cause corruption is none but that they be killed or crucified or that their hands and feet be cut off from opposite sides or that they should be exiled from the land. This is a, the grace of this world and in the hereafter is a great punishment. In fact, if you want to check this within the context, we see that uh, Muhammad did uh, he didn't crucify them as far as I remember, but he did cut off their hands and feet from opposite sides and branded their eyes and let them bleed out because okay. they were uh, robbers who did something similar to uh, certain camel uh, owners. Okay. Yeah, I know that uh, that terrible fabricated, uh, you know, uh, hadith about uh, urine, uh, camel urine, okay? and uh, I wouldn't about... say it's fabricated, but yeah, that exactly is... that one. This is what I believe that this is fabricated because it goes against Quran, okay? Uh, Quranic verses that it says that uh, if you uh, want to punish, you punish equally if if you have to punish, okay? But if you are patient, it's better for you. So Quran, uh, Allah says that uh, punish equally and if you are uh, patient, so Allah uh, guide us to be forgiven against those who, uh, you know, commit crimes. So, and uh, I can read for, uh, from, uh, uh, what is it, Ali? Um, this is uh, the closest uh, person to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Ali, radiallahu, he's writing to his uh, governor of, of Egypt. Says, people do bad deeds because of different reasons, intentionally or by mistake. But you forgive them as you expect that your God forgives you your bad deeds. You are stronger than the people, but re remember that the one who put you there is stronger than you, and God is the stronger. Okay, strongest. So another one. The worst people for you. Uh, these are beautiful teachings of. Uh, okay, I, I do not deny. One. I do not deny that Islamic figures uh, mm -hmm. and Islamic people have an understanding of preaching compassion and preaching justice and preaching this and that. The issue is many people do that who would also, by your understanding, be engaging in terrible behavior. I would never claim that Islam is consistent because the same Ali is also reported, according to a well-known hadith, to have uh, burnt certain Burn people, people but, Islam. Islam. But, yeah. uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, my brother, um, if you, I think, uh, I'm not a psychologist, but um, as I know, these teachings cannot come from the same person. This person must be totally, you know, crazy to burn somebody another side and here to say that. Uh, I agree. Uh, yes. <laughs> Let me. Uh, he says that uh, Malik, do don't fight God because you can't get uh, can't cannot get uh, away from his anger and you will always need his mercy and forgiveness. Whenever you forgive someone, uh, do not regret and, uh, uh, sorry, do not for, uh, for, uh, regret it and never be happy for punishing someone, okay? Mm -hmm. So there are other beautiful uh, words from him and it cannot be from the same person. So that, uh, those uh, hadiths, I totally, uh, but uh, reject them because they they go against Quranic teachings, which everywhere says that forgive. Um, I will read for you if you want some of them. Okay. No, no, no. But, but right. thank you. I appreciate one of them. Forty-two, forty. One of them. And the uh, retribution for an evil act is an evil one like it. But whoever pardons and makes uh, reconciliation, 
his reward is from Allah. So Allah says that I, nice. you know, reward you if you. So for me, for me, my understanding, you, we cannot kill even a, a murderer because everybody has, according Quran, has the right to repent. If sure, you, I don't deny that. I don't yes. deny that. But and the issue can, is, I cannot, I cannot take your your repentance. Maybe in ten years, okay, you will become. A totally different person. Maybe I can, you know, change you. Maybe I make you Muslim, for example. Okay. But maybe. I, may, that's a, that's a, I say maybe. So I have but no right. He, he, to change here, your, here is the issue. Away. Here is the issue. As much as as the Quran, even if the Quran said, for example, I prefer that you forgive all the people who disbelieve and who do terrible things, but it also said their punishment is uh, death and destruction and this and this and that, but it also said I prefer that you should do this and this and that because that's actually better for you. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't care at all. Okay, that's it's a nice thing to say uh, being forgiving is good, but at the yeah. same time it is also the same uh, authority that preaches that a certain cruel punishment is acceptable or even commanded. Like what? It, it also says, for example, that you should be good to your wives. I know that I know you will have a reformist objection to this. It also says that you should be good to your wives, but at the same time, it says that you should be disciplining them and uh, hit hit no. them if they are out of order. For example. Okay, we can talk about that also. That sure, sure. Doesn't say. <laughs> we can Maybe. talk about it forever. I know. Yeah. Yes. Because the I is, yeah. when we come to the epistemology of uh, epistemology of of the of uh, what you believe in and why you believe in Islam. Uh, it's interesting. I, we, we talked a lot about law and morality and this and that, uh, and we disagreed a lot. And uh, don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to be uh, aggressive. I'm just really no. holding on to uh, what I see that something doesn't make sense in, or as I perceive it, I try to challenge it. No. Uh, I just don't understand why you would believe in, um, in Islam regardless of all these interpretation marathons, interpretation challenges islam's history its lack of solution to uh the human suffering and problems i don't believe that there is uh, a system out there which is supposed to give us a solution <laughs> I, I don't i don't believe that there is an absolute solution to our problem i think there is no such thing such a thing doesn't exist exists it's a false false expectation you think it is islam but i don't understand at all why you would think it is islam other than that you just want to believe in that for, some, okay, for but, certain reasons but uh, i told you that uh, this is very rational that uh, this jungle and the rules of the jungle is the source of all problem that quran and abrahamic religion for me my understanding describe it as satan Okay, and he uh, Quran wants that we get rid of this Satan, satanic system. And I can prove to anybody that Satan is just this system that allow people to kill each other and become richer and richer, to do all bad deeds uh, in order to become richer and richer, corruption, prostitution, all bad deeds. Okay, so this is the, the source and Allah wants us to get rid of this source and one day it will happen. That's why I was going to, you know, uh, discuss with this EF Dawa to prove them that Allah doesn't give time to Satan until Qiyamah. There is a limited time for him. One day, Satan will disappear for, from our life. So there will be nobody who can fool us. So this is a very, very deep discussion a long mm -hmm. discussion mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. but we are way over our time i yes, we said but, we would go about an hour yes. but. but i wish that uh, once uh, because we want um, i'm on your side to fight this uh, you know extremist all right and you uh, i defend your rights to talk and say express yourself and um, I wish that uh, once maybe you can invite uh, Hadrika Jew so that I can uh, debate oh, him. Oh. And then, uh, <laughs> he, he, he will he will not come again yeah. here on my show. To show. prove him that he has no <laughs> knowledge of Islam when he says these uh, you know uh, crazy things, and I don't believe that we need a bigger enemy to Islam than these people, unfortunately. Okay, because as a Muslim, I hate their Islam, and I'm the biggest enemy of that Islam. And I have fought that Islam 42 years. I have lost my brother, by the way. They killed my brother as well, executed him. In 1988, this Ayatollah Khomeini, he executed 30,000 political prisoners in, within a few months, okay? So we have been fighting these extremists in 42 years now. And uh, yes, I hate them and they are terrible. They are the biggest enemy of Islam. And I wish um, 
we can, you know, uh, stop them. I didn't know that. I'm I'm very sorry about that. No, I understand. Uh, Thank you very much. Thirty three years ago, and he was two years older than me, and we didn't get even a grave, you know, a body, because they buried them in mass graves. All right. Unfortunately, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but um, anyway, uh, I wish yeah. that. Uh, well, no, no I, um, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, yeah. um, and all the best. I, I have to say, um, I don't think that 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 your understanding of Islam uh, is in alignment with the tradition with with with, with Islam itself. Yeah. I don't think it's in alignment with the traditional understanding of Islam. Mm-hmm. I don't think it is doable. I don't but think it millions. will work. But I th- I do think I would yeah. prefer it if. Uh, if all Muslims were like you in their understanding exactly. of Islam, I would absolutely prefer that. I don't yeah, want these <laughs> crazy nut jobs to walk around and preach their nonsense. Yeah. I would absolutely prefer that. I wish you good luck and all the best. Thank we will have, we will actually have a debate on this weekend on yes, Saturday, yes, right? Of course. You yes. and I will have a debate about, about who represents Islam and all that. Yes. But but I support your mission. Thank you, much. Despite Rabbi. that, I have said before, I don't think that it is possible to change Islam. I don't okay. think it will work. But hey. No, we are not going to change Islam. We are going to, uh, you know, to show them the right interpretation of Islam. That you are yeah, wrong. I, I, I would call it changing. Yeah. Okay, yes. <laughs> <But> yeah. <laughs> All right. The right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I wish that uh, uh, you help me as well in this uh, mission to fight this, um, you know, uh, extremist and. Uh, we spread love in, in, on this planet because we don't want this all this hate. There are forces who make mm-hmm. money from spreading hate and mm-hmm. fight mm-hmm. against co- creating conflicts. But okay. I hope we are not none of us. I, I want to quickly look at some super chats here. Yes, there were please. some that have questions, especially it was yes, a kind please. of an interesting conversation. So I didn't really uh, want to get off track. Um, Zagros Oskan said, now non-denominational groups are starting in Islam, just like in Christianity. Oh, it's an interesting development, right? <laughs> uh, uh, um, what else was there? Somebody made a super chat, uh, didn't say anything with it, but thank you so much. Rashad Perry said, AP Momo Hijab had, had a go at Douglas Murray today. I didn't, I'm, I'm not aware of that. Should be interesting. Uh, Hindu historian said, This is a very unorthodox understanding of Islam. I agree. Muji disagrees, and I wish him good luck with that. Um, what else is there? Another super chat somewhere here. Let me put that on the screen. I want to put them on the screen. I have them all listed here, but I would rather just show them instead of reading them off the screen. It's much more engaging, much more fun. Thank you for joining me here, by the way, Muji. It was. It was kind of, it was interesting. Thank you. M. Doug said, do you think socialism rather than religion would be more in line with your ideology? Uh, I say that um, if they can, I I, I believe that they never can, uh, you know, uh, bring equality to this planet. Okay. But if they can, I would be uh, more than happy because I believe that uh, only God can guide us to to that, uh, you know, to that world because the uh, the tools is there praying fasting you know is not only to come there to that world but to keep it also so we need the tools and the tools are there Hajj, which i explained for you that we have to go there and you know practice it and then say that i accept it and then the praying that we have to stand towards that and say that uh, uh, prostrate to that equality and say mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. show me the right way okay and all these things these are the tools which unfortunately they they don't have it mm-hmm. yeah, it's a nice idea as well but i would i would um i would prefer socialism to islam i would not prefer socialism to religion no offense okay. but uh, of uh, course i said that if it is uh, yeah. they can do that then that's easier yeah because you don't need to pray and fast and so on but but yeah. i don't believe that they they can okay no me, me neither it's it's nonsense it's nonsensical it's a very bad utopia susanna uh, oh susanna hey susanna <coughs> Susanna is here. Hey, Susanna. Thank you for the super chat. Said, has Mushtaba been honest about his membership support for the cult terrorist group Mujahideen Khalka, aka MEK? Hi, okay. AP. I hope you're well. Is that, uh, are you a member of a specific uh, group that is also known as a terrorist okay. group? All right. This is, uh, okay. I would love to uh, explain this. Okay. This is an uh, accusation that Iranian fascist regime. It's like Adolf Hitler also was saying that uh, the partisans are terrorists, okay? And Iranian fascist regime also says, and these people, unfortunately, they 
they just blindly accept what uh, this fascist terrorist Khomeini says. And USA and Europe, in order to save Iranian regime uh, from falling, they put my organization in terrorist list, okay, in order to appease uh, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, the, a reformist president who came in power. But we went to the court in Europe and USA and uh, UK. And these courts, they were asking all these countries, USA and Europe and UK, to bring the, a single evidence that this group is a terrorist group, okay? And they couldn't in many years come with a single uh, evidence, and they always were saying that the evidence is classified, that the court didn't accept, okay? In 2009, a court in London forced UK government to remove MEK from terrorist list because who put MEK in terrorist list in UK was a corrupted foreign minister called Jack Straw, who was kicked out of uh, the parliament a few years ago for corruption, okay? And in USA in 2012, also a, a court forced uh, Hillary Clinton to remove my organization because they said that simply this organization is the alternative to this terrorist uh, regime in Iran and they are just freedom fighters. And this organization has thousands of parliamentarians from Europe and USA just a few weeks ago. You know, uh, Mike Pence, do you know Mike Pence? Yeah. AP? Yeah, he was Donald Trump's, uh, uh, what is it, uh, deputy or uh, vice president. He was in a rally and he was supporting MEK. So you cannot tell me that that great man, such a politician, come and support a terrorist group. All of them know that MEK is the anti, uh, you know, extremism, anti, um, the uh, how to say, uh, the, the biggest enemy of Iranian regime and they are democratic. Uh, women are equal in this organization, okay? Women, for, for you to know, women are leaders. 70% of the organization uh, are men, 30% are women, but out of the leadership, 70% are women because we believe that women have been oppressed throughout the history and we need to lift them up, okay? So we have a leader called Maryam Rajavi and uh, <clears throat> uh, women pray front of men as imam. They don't pray behind men in equal lines. So we believe in equality between men and women, absolutely equality as well. So this is a, a wrong. I, I, I feel like I feel like you should have been more uh, upfront about uh, this whole yeah. matter. Uh, Another thing I have to tell you but, that. But yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. it's it's fine. So so it's a um, you are part of a of the of the group MEK, which is. No, I'm, uh, I'm just supporting it. My brother was uh, also a supporter, and he was executed. And I have to tell you that uh, there are lots of uh, you know atheists, Marxists. You know who, those who hate even Islam support this organization because they mm -hmm. see that this organization uh, is talking beautiful and doing great job fighting Iranian. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, that's very, that's very nice. That's so very as nice. I told you, thousands of European parliamentarian. Uh, I, I, I understand. I would, I would, uh, I would like to look further into it myself. Yes. Unfortunately, I hope you can understand. I do not want to further. Yes. Uh, I understand that you don't know for, for, further that. further go into it that yeah. uh, could result in a partisan explanation of what this organization is or how heroic they are. Yes. I would not like to do that at the moment. So that just was an accusation that I should explain. Okay, that. okay, okay. Thank you for that. All right. Um, I just would like to say that if somebody has more question, I usually have uh, my stream uh, live stream. They can call uh, mm -hmm. on my channel, mm -hmm. the Perfect Dava, and then talk to me. I would love to talk to them as well, anybody who would like to. Okay, Susanna also said his inconsistencies can be explained by his belief in the MEK, MEK ideology, extremism rooted in both communism and Islam. When you put those two ideologies together, it makes a really ugly baby, is what Susanna said. All right. It's, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's. I appreciate it. Thank you, Susanna, for the input. Zagros Uskan made a super chat and said, if we all believed and listened to Santa Claus, we would all be good children and the whole world would smell like roses, right? That's what I say. That's what I think. That's what I say in different words. I'm just replacing myself with uh, Santa Claus. Uh, Raj said, question, why should other religions treat Muslims as equals when Islam does not treat other gods, religions, as equal to Allah, shirk? No equality in gods. <laughs> uh, not, not sure if you actually want to answer the question, but yeah. Well, but Thank you so much. Um, what? Did he just kick himself out? Hello? 
Okay. <laughs> um, Charlie's Gadget said this guy is going to get attacked by Islam, PBUH. And Zagros Özkan said, AP, you know, San Sarsalvo, 180 kilometer. I, he, isn't that guy a rapper in Turkey or something? I don't know. I, I don't know very much about the scene. But yeah, uh, I think the guy just removed himself. Uh, he's not coming back, apparently, as far as I see it. Oh, now here he is. Hello. Hello, Muji. What happened? Yeah, so I, I don't know. Uh, you guy just... You you uh you kicked me out. <laughs> no, I didn't do anything. I, was I, I just uh, you uh, I said but but then suddenly, I yeah. uh, you know anyway. Uh, but yeah, okay. Um, so we are we are through. But thank you so much. Uh, maybe we can talk again. We will have a yes. debate on on Saturday about uh, Islamic extremism and violence and all that. Despite uh, uh, I think that uh, we talked a lot. Uh, yeah, uh, still. Anyway, still. <laughs> but we can talk more. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for joining. Uh, thank you, Muji, for uh, the you, conversation. Muji. Oh, by the way, uh, I, I just say because uh, some people uh, usually say that Taria, yeah, is uh, about uh, what I call your brother. Okay. I again say that um, Malik, kindness, forgiveness, and loving the people should be your priority. priority. And do not attack them like a wild animal because people are two groups. One is those who are your brothers by religion and one those who are your brothers by creation. So when mm -hmm. I say to you, um, my brother is from uh, Ali Radiullah, okay, it's 1400 years ago, it's not a tariya, okay, it's a teaching that I have learned from there. So you are my brother in creation and uh, I hope that uh, one day <clears throat> you join me so that we can together get out of this jungle and believe in a uh, Utopia, a beautiful world. Okay. I, I don't. I don't believe that it will happen. But I. But I okay. appreciate. I appreciate <laughs> the emotion. No problem. Uh, you. You do. You do still adopt and stick to certain Shia uh, thoughts and understandings, as far as I understand it, right? No, no, no. Uh, I uh, just as as I said, I accept whatever uh, goes in line uh, in my understanding from Islam in uh, Shiism and in Sunnism, both of them, okay? So it's not, I don't get uh, exactly, yeah, I, I don't I call have, myself Shia. I have okay. huge problems with that, but yeah, that will be a whole new discussion. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. Right. Thank uh, you, thanks, man. everybody. Have a fantastic day. And as I always say, stay away from Islam. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.